This week on The Truth, we're chasing tall timber Gabriel in the rolling hills of Mississippi and in the old hardwood bottoms of the Mississippi River. Come along with Brad Ferris and myself as we head out to witness the sun rising on some beautiful spring turkey wood. Hello, I'm Wilbur Primos. All these hunts are exactly as they happen. There's no fancy edits, there's no stage scenes. The calling you're gonna hear is excited calling, but all these hunts are as they actually happen, and that's why we call it the truth about hunting. When the truth began in 1987, we had no idea where this journey would take us. 30 years later, we're still having fun. Welcome to Primo's Truth About Honey. Primo's Truth About Hunting is brought to you by Bushnell, Savage, Federal, Matthews Archery, Camelback, Mossy Oak, Squincher, Polaris, and Primo's Hunting Speak the Language. Well, Will and I are on a place we hadn't ever hunted before, buddy, by our zones. And there's turkeys here. I've been out here a couple afternoons just riding, looking, finding tracks and sign, and came out here one morning. That daylight, didn't hear anything, but it was real cloudy and hot and muggy. But we hadn't heard a turkey all this morning. I know they're here, they're just not saying nothing. quickly get our gear and move to a small grove of trees where several bush hog lanes come together. That's, that's, that's down there. Yeah, oh, that's why. Right there. Anybody's not one right there? I thought I heard it here a minute ago down here. I've been listening to him. He right might there. be coming up that lane right there. He coming. As we set up, this turkey is gobbling every few minutes. I get on a tree directly behind Brad when we hear a second gobbler sound off. Our setup may be a screw up with where these turkeys are. Then out of nowhere, the first gobbler has silently slipped up to our gobstopper hen decoy on our right of all places, and it's really close to me. Jordan has to turn his camera all the way to our right, and he can't see the viewfinder anymore. So Brad turns to get his gun around, and Brad has to reach up and help Jordan zoom in and focus the camera on the long beard.
Will. Will. Hey man, your old days came back into play, didn't they? I had to self film that one. He has been there for like 20 minutes. I don't know. He came from there to there and he came through all this tall grass. He coming, I guess he had you pegged on his tree right here. He tried to come up in that bush with me right there. And so I'm, 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 you know, I'm just watching. I, I, I watch you do hope that he gets like. He was, he was feet from you. I know. And so, and so slowly I, I'd wait till he turned his tail and I'd look back at y'all and you were gone. I'm going, He's in the grass somewhere. <laughs> I go back and look at Terry, and then I, I, I came back and I thought, I saw that gun come up. Went, oh yeah, that was. <laughs> just, <laughs> just the intensity of that, and oh, the yeah. gobble, and the. He got two beers. Yes, he does, doesn't he? Oh, he got more than two. Doesn't he? Uh, just two. I want, because you know, the first time you made him gobble, he was, he was down in here. So we got the electric Polaris, and it's parked right there. And um, I want you to look at that spur. That spur's been broke off and grown back. Yep, got a curve in it. That's a home turkey there. My house ain't a mile from here. <laughs> I'll be down. I never, could see, I never could see his beard, but I could see it full fan. I could see I, his beard. <laughs> I promise you he tried to come up in there with me, so I just shot. I know it. I saw him because you, you had yelped and he was looking for you. <laughs> All right, my man. Hey, fun time. Yes, Always. Sir. Jordan, fun thank time. you. This segment of The Truth is brought to you by Height Spot Quivers, Black Gold, and Ripcord. Brad and I are now in an old bottom with friends Chipper Gibbs and his son Henry. We have several turkeys gobbling at daylight, so the game begins. Since they answered the fly downs with the wing and box call, I won't make another call until they're on the ground. Brad is set up about 50 yards behind me, and once they've flown down, we begin talking back and forth on our slates like a flock of hens. As you can hear, this really fires these turkeys up. Now we have them thinking there are multiple turkeys down here in this bottom instead of just one lonely hen. And it isn't long before we catch some movement heading our way.
As Big Country zooms back, look to the left, and you can see the other turkeys that were gobbling coming in as well. Wasn't that textbook? That's that there's my good luck charm right there. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you, Brad. I, these I could see out of the periphery just because this one started coming first. How about that, isn't it? And we had him right down to gun barrel. Yeah. And then I said, I hope y'all see those turkeys. There was one, two, three, there's four. Four here, and then or three here. Three here, one here. This is this is what's beautiful right here, too. Look at that. He didn't even flop but a second kind of oh, Look at that spur. Look at that. Broke that one. Good. He sure did. Broke it off. Mm -hmm. He was mad though. He, he got, he got a long beard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, here's a scenario we've been a while since we, we discussed. We found a turkey right at daylight. He got one in a tree. We get set up 150 yards from him. Just well, where you set up, so hopefully you know a little bit about the terrain and you know he can make the approach. Yep. Nothing's so, going to stop him. So what call do you make? What's the first thing you do after you get set up and you get camouflaged when in? I can, when I can finally focus on the leaves and I can see good enough, I'm going to use a wing before I do anything else. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fly down. Hit a tree. And just, and he, this morning we were hunting. The second time I flew down, I flew down with like two hens flying down. Oh, he answered it. And so he gobbled at that, so he's thinking, hmm, then what? And then I'm going to make a fly down cat. What I'm doing is I'm like a hands on a limb and she's clucking a little bit, then. That sounds really good. And, uh, and this morning he went, wow. He answered that, and then I'm going <laughs> to. Because I got my mouth calling my mouth because I'm going to put the box down for long because if he starts coming, I don't want him to have my hand. But like this morning, after you did that, he gobbled, and then we sat quiet. You didn't make another call until he flew down. No. And then you and I started calling back and forth. If, if you keep calling to him, he's going to stay in that tree because it, he, the hen's supposed to walk to him, and he's supposed to fly to her. That's what happens. But you shut up, he gets anxious. And then that's as that, and they start. They got fired up this morning. And all we were doing was just like two hens talking to each other. Mm -hmm. And you can do this by yourself we with a mouth on, call. We were both on slates. Mm -hmm. or, or say if you're by yourself, you can do it with a mouth call and a slate. Yeah. But take your temperature. That's what we always do. Let them tell you how much to call. Whether it's a lot, if they're if they're just cutting you off every time, have fun with them. Yes. But if they're not answering every time, you need to back off, slow down. So it's a fun morning. Can't, Great. Morning. Never gets old, does it? Never gets old. <laughs> Ben and I came in and we boated in and came in here and unloaded everything, got everything up top. We're in our cords. It's, you know, we got a different situation than we used to have. Of course, we see the high water in the boat as normal, the way the Mississippi has gotten to be every year. But the river came up in March and it got almost 50 foot, got to about right there, just almost to the top of this. And the power company won't cut the power back on until they can come in and inspect the poles, which is a good practice. So, but anyway. Didn't stop us from coming turkey hunting. Turkey's here. We just got a lot of high ridges and I'm gonna fire the old, old generator up. This thing come in handy and we're gonna get we're gonna get with it. Right on, oh yeah. TV, light, food, and turkeys. Love springtime. Closed captioning for the truth provided by Gold Tip Arrows. This segment of The Truth is brought to you by Ozonix and Ceasefire. So it ain't, it ain't too bad not having electricity as long as you got plenty of extension cord. <laughs> <laughs> so it hasn't been that too bad roughing it down here with, a, with our little 
the generator going. This thing pulls some juice here. Watch. <laughs> and we're going to leave here in about 20 minutes. Get over there about 6 o'clock. They've been gobbling around 605, 610, something like that. So, a lot of tracks over there, so hopefully we'll, we'll hear some, some turkeys. <laughs> Down that bank, the Mississippi River is right there, 100 yards. Turkey's about 400 yards this way. We had to come around here, get up on this high ridge with them. They're still gobbling good, that we can hear them just in. As the morning goes, Brad and Ben weave around several ridges trying to get close to some gobbling turkeys. But the high water doesn't let them get into a good position where they think they need to be. Oh, 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 oh. So late morning, they decide to head to a big food plot right in the middle of a ridge that's still out of water. And with plenty of fresh tracks in the road, they know there's definitely some turkeys hanging around. A lot of tracks in the road right there. Gobbler here. Good sign. He's cool. A big block of hardwoods right there. And uh, they always roosted there, so I'm thinking, I'm hoping they're in there. We're just going to sit here and call for 10 or 15 minutes and listen. And at least we know there's some gobblers over here. If we don't hear them, we'll ease back out. Just keep doing this till we, till we strike one. That was so awesome right there. My goodness. I'm telling you, that is as pretty as it ever gets to me. Coming through there in that sun in this river bottom, that big old gobbler come in perfect. Keyed it on them decoys and them naps were tearing him up. Just like they have me, my eyes are swollen up, everything. <laughs> 
Look at that. That's a, I'm saying that's a four-year-old turkey right there. Look at that spur. He'll hang. He'll hang on a limb right there. Big old beard. We came in here with a little generator. Had a, had a TV going last night. Cooked on the grill. Had one lamp. And we just had one heck of a turkey hunt. Look, just hearing this turkey and seeing that right there, that if I don't hunt another time this year for turkeys or hear another one gobble, I won't be disappointed because that, that was a sight right there. Ben, we got him, buddy.